last lecture we have seen or started with the concurrency control schemes in which we have seen the first protocol that is lock based protocol so in lock based the protocol mainly two types of lock modes are used that shared mode and exclusive mode so shared mode allow only to read the data item for the particular transaction and exclusive mode allow only both read and write for that data item uh, with that transaction so uh, we have seen that how what is compatibility matrix shared mode is compatible with shared mode means multiple transaction can read the data item simultaneously but shared mode is not compatible with exclusive or exclusive is not compatible with the shared similarly exclusive mode is not compatible with exclusive means whenever any uh, transaction performing a write operation on the data item on any data item that data item cannot be used by another transaction or access by another transaction so that part we have seen along with that we have seen what is mean by uh, the or the drawback of the lock based protocol that is deadlock may occur then in that case it may be possible uh, that starvation may occur so this disadvantage of lock based protocol also we have seen now see next protocol on this basis we are going to see that is two phase locking protocol so what is two phase locking protocol so two phase locking protocol as its name is given two phase so it work in two phases this protocol work in two phases this is a protocol which ensures complete serializability see this type of question normally ask in the gate question paper uh, true or false or which are the following statements are true so in this way this question is normally ask in gate question paper which of the protocol ensures conflict serializability so two phase locking protocol ensures conflict serializability or it may ask for your objective also now see as i have told that it work in two phases okay the first phase is growing phase so what is growing phase in growing phase the transaction may obtain the locks may obtain the locks means transaction may request a, a lock using the instruction such as lock s on data item q okay so in this way the transaction may obtain different locks on different data items in this phase growing phase but a transaction may not release the locks the transaction may not release the lock so simple in the growing phase transaction obtain the locks may not release the locks in sinking phase that is phase number 2 transaction may release the lock it is allow for the transaction to release the lock so to release the lock which instruction is used anyone remember unlock suppose the data item q is want to unlock so the transaction may release the locks on different data items but the transaction may not obtain any locks means in growing phase only the locks are obtained and in shrinking phase only the locks are released so initially a transaction when the transaction start always it is in the growing phase means it acquire all the required lock if the transaction is going to use three four data item a b c d then it acquire all the locks at initial growing phase okay whatever the need is if the transaction require four data items five data items that locks are acquired initially once a transaction release a lock any one of these suppose a b c d is acquired by this transaction and the transaction release a lock on a okay for example on a it enters into the shrinking phase once a transaction release a lock it enters into the shrinking phase and it can issue no more lock request once it release any one of the lock once it execute unlock instruction the transaction is enters into the shrinking phase and not allowed to acquire more locks so that is the simple two phase locking protocol so that example already we have seen in the previous lecture the transaction t3 and t4 so in that what we have done we first initially lock all the transact all the data items whatever the required in the required mode so here it is going to perform transfer the dollar 50 from account b to account a and that's why this transaction t3 it require 
data item B and A. Now, he, the transaction is going to perform write operation means the transaction is going to update that values on B and A and that's why it requires the X that is exclusion lock on the data item B. So, it acquire that lock in another it requires exclusion lock on A. Why? Because it is going to perform the write operation and once the operations are completed and it execute unlock B then this transaction T3 enters into the shrinking phase. It enters into the shrinking phase. Okay. Once it enters into the shrinking phase, not allowed to acquire a new locks. So, it unlock B, unlock A, whatever the locks acquired initially, these are unlocked here. Similarly, the transaction T4, in the transaction T4, it reads the values of A and B and display its A plus B value. Now here the exclusion lock is not required that we have seen in the previous lecture. Only shared mode lock is sufficient. Only is going to read the value. So it lock SA means it enters into the glowing phase. Then lock on data item B in shared mode. Display A plus B and once the operation is completed it first unlock A. Once it en uh, execute the unlock A it e enters into the Shrinking phase not allowed to uh, lock any more data item. So that is simple two phase locking protocol. And the point where the last lock is acquired, it is known as lock point. It is known as lock point. So here in this case, it is a lock point. Here in this case, it is a lock point. The point where the last lock is acquired, that is known as lock point. So, that is about the two-phase locking protocol. It's a definition and how it works. Now, see what are the disadvantages and advantages of two-phase locking protocol. So, the first thing. So, two-phase locking protocol does not ensure freedom from the deadlock. So, deadlock may occur in two-phase locking protocol. The same example is given here. Suppose the transaction T3 is acquiring the exclusion lock on data item B and T4 is waiting shared lock on the data item B. Similarly, transaction T4 is acquired shared lock on data item A and T3 is waiting for exclusion lock on data item A. Means T4 is waiting for T3 to release the lock and T3 is waiting for T4 to release the lock. So, in this way, both of the transaction not start or not possible to execute it's a normal execution in that case how to remove it or how to avoid it in the we need to roll back any one of the transaction so the transaction which is rolled back it release all the lock acquired which are automatically available for the another transaction so in this case if we roll back transaction t3 it automatically release the exclusion lock on data item b and here the t4 get this shared lock on data item b and start it execution. So, the uh, disadvantage of two-phase locking protocol is that it is not freedom from the dead, deadlock. Means here deadlock may occur. So, this question asked in some of the gate question paper and objective. The two-phase locking protocol, what is true about two-phase locking protocol? It is conflict, uh, ensures conflict serializability and does not ensure freedom from the deadlock. So, such kind of questions are very important and two mass questions are these type of questions. And these are the properties of two-phase locking protocol. Now, see another problem that occur with the two-phase locking protocol is the cascading. Cascading rollback is possible. For example, suppose we start with the transaction T5, T6, T7 and during the execution of this one, Suppose we start the execution of this transaction, T5, T6, T5 executed. Okay, T5 start its execution. After that completion, it goes to T6, T6 executed, then it goes to T7. During the execution of the transaction T7, during the execution of the transaction T7, if a failure occur with transaction T5, if a failure occur with the transaction T5, then
okay so if a failure occur with the transaction t for you then along with transaction t for you we need to roll back transaction t6 and t7 also that is another disadvantage of two phase locking protocol that it is possible ro cascading rollback in two phase locking protocol have you understood suppose we start with t5 then t6 and then t7 during the execution of this t7 if a failure occur here in t5 then in that case we need to roll back t6 and t7 also and that is one of the disadvantage of two phase locking protocol now see to avoid these all things cascading rollback or freedom uh, not ensure the deadlock okay it may occur the deadlock there are two another modified protocols of two phase lock locking protocol strict two phase locking protocol and rigorous two phase locking protocol so in strict two phase locking protocol all locks are hold at means the transaction must hold all its exclusive locks till it commits or abort means in between not allowed to unlock exclusive lock transaction hold all its exclusive locks till it commit or abort once the transaction is committed then only that lock is released and rigorous two phase locking protocol in this all locks are held till transaction is commit or abort all locks means whether it is a shared lock or exclusive lock no matter all locks are held till commit or abort that is simple strict two phase locking protocol and rigorous two phase locking protocol all locks are held okay now the next part of this two phase locking protocol that is lock conversion so see here we consider these two transaction transaction t8 and t9 transaction t8 and transaction t9 now here see the transaction t8 it read the value of a1 read the value of a2 read the value of a n and then write the value of a1 so when we want to lock this data item which kind of lock is required for a now see here see again t8 transaction read the value of a1 a2 a n and then at the end perform the write of a1 so when we want to lock this data item for this transaction which kind of lock it require for a1 shared lock or exclusive lock perform the write operation on a1 so here it require a lock x on data item a1 then lock s on data item a2 why because it perform only read lock s on data item a n okay now in this transaction t9 it read the value of a1 it read the value of a2 and display a1 plus a2 so which lock is required for a1 and a2 here it require only shared lock on a1 and a2 okay now see here while what you observe here that the transaction t8 lock the data item a1 in exclusive mode okay and remaining uh, data items in shared mode is it possible to execute these two transaction concurrently another type of questions is it uh, that t9 get the lock s on a1 whether the concurrency control manager grant this lock lock s on a1 yes or no whether the concurrency control manager grant this lock suppose it start with this one this is granted okay then this is granted and after this as concurrent execution it switch to this transaction and request a lock this transaction t9 request a lock shared lock on data item a1 to concurrency control manager whether the concurrency control manager grant this lock yes or no
not granted correct it will be not granted why it will be not granted because this data item a1 is already locked by transaction t rate in exclusive mode which is not compatible with the shared mode and that's why t9 has to wait until t8 finish this last instruction correct and this one t9 has to wait for t8 to complete all the instruction but what we observe that this transaction t8 require the lock exclusive lock require exclusive lock on this data item a1 at a at the end see again i am repeating here this transaction t8 require the exclusive lock on data item a1 at the end initially it only read the value of a1 correct means initially it required in shared mode and then at the end it required in exclusive mode but in normal situation if it going to perform both read and write operation we use the exclusive mode lock and that's why t9 has to wait now how to solve this problem everyone clear what is the concept here initially t8 require only shared lock on the data item a1 because it is only going to read it at the end it require the exclusive lock and that's why here we are going to use the method of lock conversion what this mechanism of lock conversion it is allow for upgrading a shared lock it is allowed for upgrading a shared lock to an exclusive lock or downgrading an exclusive lock to the shared lock it is a mechanism which allow the upgrading of a shared lock to exclusive lock or downgrading the exclusive lock to the shared lock so how we can do it we can do it by using the upgrade instruction which convert shared lock to exclusive lock mode and downgrade instruction which convert exclusive to shared mode so that is the simple lock conversion mechanism is it clear so in this case in our example initially which lock we required here we need to acquire here shared lock a1 why because it only performing read then lock s on a2 lock s on a3 an sorry so parallelly or concurrently t t9 can acquire the lock okay so shared is compatible with the shared mode so it is also execute to run T9 and at the end when we complete this read of A1, we need to write of A1. So here we use the simple upgrade. So what it upgrade perform? Convert this shared lock to exclusive lock. Convert this shared lock to exclusive. So here in simple uh, words, it is shown two phase locking with lock conversion. First phase. acquire lock s on the data item acquire a lock x on the data item and convert s to x upgrade so upgrading is allowed in growing phase and in shrinking phase you can release the shared lock you can release exclusive lock or you can convert lock x into s that is downgrading so remember that upgrading is allowed in growing phase while downgrading is allowed in shrinking phase so this protocol ensures conflict serializability and the example that we have already seen it will be execute like this how it execute concurrently if you want to execute t8 and t9 how we can execute it first acquire a lock or request a lock s on the data item a1 it will be granted by concurrency control manager why because no one is using it then the transaction t9 request a lock s on data item a1 whether it will be granted yes or not yes or no hmm is this second lock s on a1 will be granted s yes, it will be granted why because shared lock is compatible with the shared lock so this will be also granted then 
this will be granted this will be granted and perform all the operation unlock a1 unlock a2 then perform all and at the end here it going to perform write on data item a1 so for write we require the exclusive lock so upgrade a1 so once we execute this instruction it convert it into the exclusive lock from the share to exclusion and then it perform write operation on the data item a1 so simple concept i think it is clear to everyone yes or no is it clear to everyone okay now the simple algorithms are here two algorithms are there one for read and one for write how actually read and write work in the form of programming or in the form of algorithm the simple pseudo code is given here a transaction ti issues the standard read and write instruction the operation read okay the operation read suppose it is how it processed if ti has a lock on d if the transaction is already a lock on data item d then it perform read directly because uh, once it is locked a read can be allowed whether it is shared or whether it is exclusive read is allowed see again if ti has a lock on d any kind of lock it may be s or it may be x if it is already a lock on d then ti directly read the value of d else if it has no lock on d then if necessary wait until no other transaction has exclusive lock on d means if other transaction tj has exclusive lock on data item d then the ti has to wait then ti has to wait correct then after this tj release this lock or unlock it then grant ti a lock s on data item d why because it is going to read only that's why only shared lock is required and then transaction ti read the data item d so that is the simple pseudo code for read operation now the next for write now what changes required in the write operation see here so write d process as if ti has a exclusive lock on the data item if the transaction has already exclusive lock on the data item directly perform because for the writing the data item we need the exclusive lock if the transaction ti has already a exclusive lock on d then it perform the write d operation else if it is not there the lock x is not there if necessary wait ti wait if another transaction tj has any kind of lock shared or exclusive on d then ti has to wait until another transaction tj has any lock on d why because it is requesting exclusive lock which is not compatible with shared and not compatible with exclusive and that's why if any other transaction has already lock on d then ti has to wait if ti has already shared lock on d if ti has already shared lock on d only use the upgrade so convert it into the exclusive mode and allow to write if ti has a lock shared then use the upgrade and convert it into the exclusive mode. grant ti a new lock exclusive lock on d grant ti a new exclusive lock on d is it clear all locks are commit or abort uh, after commit or abort released 